Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the first webinar of the Green Me Up project. For those who uh, are not uh, familiar with uh, this project, um, the Green Me Up project uh, has, let's say, the main aim of enhancing the uptake of biomethane in uh, Europe. And uh, uh, as you know, uh, as of today, the um, Biomethane is one of the key renewable energy sources for the decarbonization of the EU, uh, also because it will, of course, reduce the imports uh, from uh, natural gas and uh, it will also uh, contribute to the circular bioeconomy because, uh, of course, uh, for, let's say, producing biomethane, we can use uh, residues and wastes. And for this reason, for giving, let's say, a more import, a bigger importance to biomethane, the Green Me Up project has the main aim of enhancing the uptake and the production of biomethane in Europe. The, the current situation, let's say, of Europe, um, it varies among uh, states. We have uh, some states that have, let's say, a more advanced biomethane market, so where biomethane rates uh, production are very high and other states where biomethane markets are still emerging. Um, and the main aim of the project is to align the production of these states uh, across all Europe. Uh, in order to reach this goal, uh, let's say that uh, Green Me Up will uh, mainly work under three pillars, which are society, market, and policy. Uh, first of all, we will foster the production of biomethane in those markets where uh, biomethane production is still ongoing, is still emerging. Then we will also try to increase the social acceptance of biomethane and also the, the awareness of this uh, renewable source with um, science-based evidences. And we will also, at the end of the project, design a set of market uptake measures for the deployment of biomethane across Europe. Uh, in this case, we will also, of course, contribute to uh, achieving the main results of the Repower EU EU targets, in particular under the diversification of energy transition and also the acceleration of the energy transition. Uh, our team is mainly composed by, uh, let's say, several uh, biogas and biomethane association across uh, all Europe. We are 15 partners uh, and uh, our mm, Consortium includes uh, uh, SMEs, research organization, and also biogas associations. Uh, the main aim of today's webinar is, uh, uh, let's say, to um, better analyze and better understand the uh, situation in uh, those emerging markets that are still under development and uh, that still needs, let's say, uh, some uh, market uptake measures and some policy re recommendations for the um, for deployment for the better deployment of uh, biomethane uh, so we will uh, mainly hear the voices of those eu countries in uh, which biomethane market is uh, still uh, emerging and we will also discuss about uh, the best practices and the market uptake measures that can be used uh, I would say at this point, uh, I will be also, of course, the moderator of this webinar. Um, and if you uh, all agree, I would say that we can start with our first speaker, uh, which is uh, Angela Saints from the European Biogas Association. And uh, Angela will give us an overview of, let's say, the, the current situation of biomethane in Europe. Uh, based also on the uh, statistical report that the European Biogas Association has published uh, uh, a, a few weeks ago. So please, Angela, the floor is yours. Hello,
Hello. I'm sure that you hear me at the moment. Oh, yes, we can. You hear can hear me? me? Yes. I think she's having some uh, audio issues. So, Teresa, if you can go ahead. Yes. So, um, we I would say we will left Angela presentation for the uh, next step. So, uh, at this point, we will uh, um, go on with our session two, which is about biomethane dynamics in emerging markets. In this case, uh, we will hear the voices of four main countries, which are the uh, Czech Republic, Poland, Latvia, and Estonia. Of course, they are also uh, partners in uh, Green Me Up, and they will give us an overview of the current situation of the biomethane markets in uh, their own countries. We can start with the first speaker, uh, which is uh, Jan Habart from the uh, Czech Republic uh, Biogas Association. So please, uh, Jan, the, the floor is yours. You can uh, you can start your presentation. Um, good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> um, let's see how to share it. Share screen. Mm. Yeah. So you hear me well? Everything is okay? Yes. I'm uh, chairing uh, Czech Biomass Association. So we are covering, let's say, all uh, producers, manufacturers of um, users of biomass. It means also combustion of biomass and also biogas in means of electricity and, and heat use, not only biomethane. Um, uh, but today it's <clears throat> it's all about biomethane, of course. Uh, we have recently about uh, seven seven eight projects which are already approved, or they are in a very late stage of being approved and uh, being in a full operation. Um, uh, recently, um, and there is there are some other plants uh, under the constructions, but last year the the legislation as as is not like preparing the first first plan they they find out that it was really difficult to start operation there was administrative issues and uh, uh, many complicated things so now there is a big debate and i'm really happy that uh, government wants to make things smoother and better so we can uh, we can go faster um now we didn't knew, but we realized there are uh, very, very small but uh, important things that we need to tail up it to uh, to speed up the process of construction and um, operation of the plant. Um, we are now debating that uh, Czech Republic can produce up to one uh, one hundred million uh, cubic meter of uh, biomethane. Uh, every year uh, in 2030 uh, so a lot it's a lot compared what what we have recently but uh, i think we have quite a good opportunity because we have about 400 uh, biogas plants that are um, producing uh, chp combined heat and power um i would say 50 percent of them are in a close distance to the gas net czech republic has really uh, danced uh, air gas uh, grid and others others seems that they are they are doable or that uh, the biomethane can be transported via via truck and 
uh, our industry and uh, transport sector is really uh, seeking, or we we are actually now feeling we are under pressure. It's is really uh, in a few few months the situation has been turned out that we're like okay yeah we we need everything from electricity all the renewables electricity renewables and now now the biomethane is really a topic and industry needs it a lot i think because there is a condition from uh, that if they want to invest into the gas it needs to be green gas so it's really we are really welcome them um coming to our uh, let's say raw materials uh, the biogas plant we are operating right now are from let's say 2010 when there was a issue with uh, on a commodity market with agric in agriculture sector so uh, there was uh, intentions actually to make um, agricultural uh, stuff uh, turn into biogas as uh, let's say take out part of the uh, product uh, from the over uh, saturated agriculture market and we are now changing it uh, trying to change it from let's say normal uh, uh, corn silage to something right like, like rotary crops um, and something more uh, more sustainable um, and so on um, but uh, the, the operators actually seen that th there needs to be some part of the source material uh, coming from agriculture in the in the future because we can't cover everything with uh, uh, manure um, and other other waste from agriculture and um, uh, municipal solid waste um we have relatively small amount of um, animals and animal husbandry uh, to make it all from advanced biofuel um there is uh, there is now uh, actually operation subsidy uh, open uh, still there are some uh, investment subsidy but they are going to be uh, removed to not over overcome both in the same time uh, definitely the main target is uh, advanced biofuel for transportation sector and covering part of the consumption of uh, gas in um, in the industry um we there is also open debate to use part of electricity uh to make biomethane from hydrogen uh from surplus electricity but also and it's probably easier doable that biogas plant biomethane plant uh, would take some electricity for their own consumption and uh, for heating uh, i mean the electricity which is surplus in the in the grid so they would uh kind of little uh shave the the peak uh from other renewables um coming to the uh, more detail uh subsidy as i told you the investment subsidy um it's probably not going to be last lo long um it will stop up to now there was a subsidy for pilot project 85 percent of the funding rate uh usually it was a bit lower but uh, this was really nice but in a in a long term everything should be turned into the operational subsidy through uh, let's say premium payment so operator will sell the gas uh, to the gas grid get money for that and will receive a bonus uh, from state um, and now we are debating about uh, um, guarantee of origin and uh, proof of sustainability because this is something government wants to have to sell the the green part of uh, commodity to the industry and to transport sector so we are seeking the best model how to link it so it it would work uh, for transportation company to claim they have a sustainable fuel and so on uh, coming to the detail uh, the support is split for a new plant which has uh, about 100 euro per megawatt hour and converted plant uh, which is subsidy for existing biogas plant that would start produce biomethane uh, the subsidy is there about 90 euro per megawatt hour um, yeah um, 
I think we um, we have quite a good public acceptance, but uh, there is some uh, debate about transport around the biomethane plants, uh, with the, which is something public do not like that much. Um, and I would like to introduce one of our project. It's the first project that is not into the grid. It's a uh, kind of on a, on a track uh, transporting biomethane from a uh, plant in Hena Heralets into the, um, the, let's say, depot of uh, public transport um, uh, in, a, in a big uh, uh, tanks. So buses are, fu are fueled from this uh, tank Kazeto cylinders um, in a city of Ihlava. It's uh, in the center of the, the Czech Republic. Um, well, this uh, this project has struggled the most. All the ad administration border uh, we didn't knew that they would appear like uh, it's it's not ready to make support for off grid installation like this. It was uh, tailored for injection into the grid. Um, uh, so we have to tune tune system up to be ready for both uh, both system. Um, yeah, final remark. I hope uh, our biomethane sector will grow significantly in the uh, next few years. Industry and transport uh, companies really are willing to have it in 2030 uh, in context of uh, new EU ETS uh, second, um, so they can avoid to pay the allowances. Um, Finally, the support scheme is approved from Commission, so it, it really starts uh, last month, let's say. We have ambitious target, but I think from the knowledge and from the industry we have uh, in a sector of CHP biogas plant, uh, we can make it. There's a lot of local companies that can deliver biogas plant, uh, and now they, they are proving and uh, searching how to implement in their the company also biomethane issue the purification and uh, compression and so on. Um, so it's really look very optimistic. Thank you for opportunity. I can share experience from uh, Czech Republic. Um, uh, I can provide you then some more information if that would be needed. Thank you. Thank you, Jan, for it's your presentation. Oh, sure. um, yeah. Yes, we have one question for you. Um, mm -hmm. If you would like to ask it, uh, I can read it, of course. Uh, how close uh, to the natural gas network do you have an average distance? Will the pipeline be sub subsidized? In case of truck transport, is there going to be a premium? Uh, yeah, our government uh, says there will be a, a premium payment also for uh, trucks delivery. Uh, let's say, coming to the average distance, uh, we have uh, we have seventy percent of the plant located closer than two kilometers um, from the grid, and then there is also issue. You have not only one grid, but it's a it's a, let's say a high pressure. Which where where is high pressure, but also there is a big flow of uh, gas, and uh, up to now the the gas operator they were willing to to let the biomethane goes into the uh, the high pressure and high uh, let's say flow of the uh, natural gas fossil gas uh, as they thought if there would be some issues of the quality of biomethane it would be kind of diluted. Um, with the high flow of the uh, fossil fuel, but now there's opening debate also that uh, biomethane could be in injected into the middle, medium and low pressure. Uh, and they are trying to overcome also issue that there's not only a lower flow of the gas, but in the summer, the, the flow and consumption of the how to compress the, the biomethane to the to the high pressure uh, up to this storage on, uh, or something. 
so these are now uh, discussed, and I think again uh, we can have eighty percent uh, biomethane plant to be close to the grid, able to be uh, connected. We also I didn't mention uh, there's a subsidy or actually the the gas grid operator operator will uh, buy the the connection pipeline so it, it it's uh, not going to be in ownership of the biomethane plant operator uh, the biomethane plant operator have to build it and then uh, the grid operator will uh, let's say rebuy it how or how um, how to say uh, so it's it's also a good uh, thing that it will reduce uh, investment cost and and risk of the uh, plant operator. Thank you. Uh, we also have two more questions. Um, if you can answer them, of course, uh, maybe quickly. Um, how will next biomethane plants comply with Red Two regulation, more sustainable feedstock? Will it create competition of feedstocks? Um... Yeah, with with the feedstock, um, I'm I mean I'm I believe rather that some agriculture feedstock would be also uh, called uh, advanced biofuels or advanced sources because they actually help in agriculture. Uh, probably we have some quite big issues that uh, in a former era of uh, communists. Uh, we have quite a lot of animal husbandry, which is good for agriculture because of the organic method and stuff like that. And they are they are really gone. We we compared to Netherlands, Germany, we have probably one third of the uh, husbandry. Uh, so biogas plant with some crops are actually making the the similar issues. Um, and if you have like permanent uh, crop or uh, cro clover crops. Uh, they can really help uh, in, in means of soil fertility and so on. Um, what we see in the amount of advanced uh, biofuels or advanced source for uh, biofuels, there could be about three, four millions an hour, um, from a waste source. Uh, and then uh, also some agriculture, so maybe five, six together. Uh, and our uh, bagas sector now consumes well, 11 million uh, tons of the raw material. So I think we couldn't completely change it. Um, uh, if I answer it already, so I think there, there won't be no, any it's okay. competition. It's and... okay. We, we have uh, uh, several questions actually uh, ongoing. <laughs> of course, we, we do also have a and a session at the end of the... Uh, mm -hmm. all the speakers' interventions. So uh, I would suggest to move on to the next speaker. So thank you, Jan, for your, your, for your speech. Uh, I think that Angela has now solved her technical issues. So maybe she is now able to present. Yes, let's try. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, <laughs> yes okay. I can hear you. <laughs> it's okay. very, very good news. I'm Perfect. really sorry for the, for the technical issues, uh, but Don't I worry. hope that we can make it now. Um, Don't worry, it's okay. Uh, I can share your presentation in uh, yes. a second, okay? <clears throat> Great. So, uh, well, thank you very much, Teresa, for the introduction. I'm going to be quite quick on, on this introduction, but well, basically, um, I'm going to offer an overview on the state of play of biogases in Europe, then going a bit, uh, a little bit into the perspectives for the future, and looking also a little bit into the, the uses of this production in Europe. Um, so if we go to the next slide, just very shortly introducing the um, the EBA. Uh, so the EBA is the voice of biogas and biomethane in Europe. We have 46 national associations from 29 countries in Europe. 
And uh, next slide, we have also uh, some other organizations and companies, more than 300 at the moment. This is just an overview on, on our, some of our members and, and the categories, but I will not go into detail, of course. Um, next slide. In a natural world, we do, we try to promote positive le legislative developments uh, that are impacting the sector. Also, market intelligence with scientific evidence um, to and boost innovation and, and the scale up of biogases. And we also try to promote better understanding on, on biogas production, biogas use, and their impact on, on society. So now let's dive a, a little bit into the, the topic that is gathering us today. Next slide. Um, I will focus, as I said, on, on the, the state of play, the future perspectives and the, the uses. Uh, I will use information from the EBA statistical report that was released uh, last December uh, and it gathers data from 2022. So let's go a little bit into details. First, uh, we need to look a bit into the, the bigger perspective, let's say, of what has happened in Europe in the past years. Uh, we lived an energy crisis. And um, well, because of this energy crisis, what you see here is a visual, a little bit on the economic impact that this had uh, on the energy sector. We had uh, around 120 billion euros spent on fossil fuel subsidies. Um, to to support uh, the 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 crisis because of course uh, we we were very much depending on gas imports um, and then we had also a different set of measures put in place to protect consumers this is what you see on the left uh, side around 200 billion euros spent to protect consumers and. In, in terms of gas imports, uh, what happened uh, is what you have on your on your right. Uh, actually, uh, gas imports increased by 150% compared to the previous year. And what happened with renewable subsidies? Well, this uh, we saw a slight increase of 1% compared to 2021. If we go to the to the next slide, um, checking again a, a little bit what is the bigger perspective. Um, so actually, 97% of EU natural gas consumption was imported. Um, we have some more details in the box that you see in green on your left, but I want to focus a bit more on the graph. This graph is uh, representing the, um, the uh, imports of uh, selected uh, energy products in the past 30 years. Uh, more or less, uh, and you see in light blue the line uh, on the graph is representing natural gas imports. And as you can appreciate, actually in, in those years, uh, gas imports has, have more than doubled. So <clears throat> this is just to give you an idea of what has been the situation in terms of, uh, of energy and, and the, the needs of uh, importing natural gas in the EU. But next slide. If we compare this actually to, to the uh, energy that is being produced in the European Union. Um, we are taking in this graph the same period of time, 30 years more or less, and we see that actually in terms of production, uh, we see a downward trend on, on the production of fossil fuels and uh, the, the production of uh, renewables and biofuels, which are representing uh, represented in the light green line that you see on the screen. Uh, has been increasing in in uh, in that period of time, and actually from 2016, we can uh, we can see that renewables are the biggest um, primary energy produced in the EU. So, and actually since 2021, 41% uh, of energy is coming from renewables. So, in this situation of energy crisis and imported natural gas. Actually, we have a very strong ally in renewable energy production. And let's go to the next slide to see uh, a bit more in depth what is the situation uh, in the biogas sector. So in Europe, we produced in 2022, 21 BCM of biogases. Uh, when we talk about biogases, we talk about combined biomethane and biogas production. And here in this graph, we are uh, referring to, to Europe. 
um, this 21 BCM is more or less equivalent to the gas demand of Poland, just to give you an idea of the dimensions. And uh, from this 21 BCM, uh, the, the biggest increase that, that we see in terms of production, we see it in biomethane. Actually, biomethane corresponds to 20% of this 21 BCM. And because we are talking here about Europe, it's also important to specify that uh, the 21 BCM is produced in, in Europe, so meaning EU27 plus some other countries. But in, within the EU27 alone, we are producing 18 BCM. The graph here represents in lighter green the biogas production and in darker green it's the biomethane production. So you see the, the evolution and you, you can see actually that the biggest part of the growth is happening on the biomethane sector. So let's dive a little bit more into the biomethane production part in the next slide. And we can see here uh, the, the biomethane produced in the EU27 uh, and in Europe. The darker part corresponds to the EU27 and the lighter part corresponds to, to Europe, so uh, some other countries as well. And we can see that, well, if there's an acceleration on biomethane production and the, in the past four years, this production has doubled. If we considered the situation compared to the previous year, we appreciate a uh, an 18% growth in the production. And um, well, the, the countries that are currently leading this uh, development are mainly France, Italy, Denmark, and the UK at the moment. <clears throat> so let's go also to the next slide uh, to, to see uh, what is happening in terms of plants. Um, at the moment, we have 1,300 uh, plants, uh, biomethane plants uh, in Europe. And from this, um, you can see in the graph also the evolution. The darker part corresponds to the existing plants and the uh, lighter part corresponds to the new ones. So uh, in 2022, we had more than 250 new plants uh, in Europe. We are producing now biomethane in 24 countries. 75% of the plants are actually connected to the grid and mostly to, to the distribution grid. So let's also uh, go to the next slide. Uh, we have seen a little bit the overview in terms of the state of play. Now it's the time to also look at the future and the, and the prospects that we have for the sector. Uh, and well, with the data that we have in, in hand, that uh, we know that the sector can, can grow by 2030 uh, and produce 35 BCM uh, of, uh, of uh, biogases. And how are we going to reach this growth? Well, it's very important to pay attention to the, to the growth rate at this moment. We have a growth rate that corresponds to more or less 5%. Uh, so we are growing 5% 5, 5 more or less every year. But to reach the 35 BCM, we would actually need a, a growth rate of 30%. So indeed, uh, we can see here that uh, the sector has a lot of potential. We can grow a lot, but we need support to make sure that the growth rate accelerates more and we can reach this 35 BCM by, by 2030. And next uh, slide, please. Um, well, it is very important uh, to ensure this growth um, because biogases can contribute uh, very much to the future ener energy mix. And one of the, of the ways uh, to do this is uh, with adequate planning. And uh, one of the measures for adequate planning can be the governance of the energy union. So the energy union is actually requiring member states uh, to prepare national energy and climate plans. And in those plans, they need to, to include their objectives for, for climate and, and energy. And the commission asks, um, well, proposed uh, the member states to include a component on, on biogases and, and biomethane. Um, there, there had to be an update on the NECPs uh, in 2023. And end of 2023, there were 22 NECPs submitted by member states. We have 27 member states in the European Union. So um, what is the situation at this moment? Uh, if we go to the, to the other part of the, of the slide, we can see this pie. 
10 uh, countries are included at the moment in the NECP's a biomethane target. Six had already a target, biomethane target in place before the NECP's. Five are only including a, a biogas uh, target. And then there are six uh, which are not including a target uh, within the 27. And uh, one of those is Germany, which is a, a, a big producer actually of uh, biogases. And there are the other countries are, are, that are not including a target are also listed below the, the, the pie that you can see on the screen. Next slide, please. Uh, so this is just a very um, in detail overview on, on, the, on the biomethane situation, what the biomethane targets that have been secured by, by 2030. Uh, and just for you to see what is the situation now in terms of uh, countries. And we can see that actually countries like France or Italy or the Netherlands, they have already uh, quite ambitious targets for biomethane by 2030. Next slide, please. Um, so with this information in hand, so taking into consideration the current production, taking into consideration the, the NECPs targets and the targets that were already in place before the NECPs, um, EBA analyzed a little bit uh, the, 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 the situation and, and what is the situation now to reach the potential in, in by 2030 and uh, the conclusion is that at the moment we have secured 20 BCM out of these uh, 35 BCM that we need by 2030 with the NECPs and the, the, the future prospects that uh, we see for, for the sector. Uh, so, of course, we see again that uh, we have a potential and the sector is growing, but we need a, a, a bigger acceleration. Uh, we need to wait still for the coming months because there are countries like Germany, which I mentioned, that are not including a target and have a big potential. Uh, we, we, there are other countries like um, Finland, Sweden or Ireland who could also include a target in the coming months in their NECP. So let's see what happens in the coming months and let's see uh, how the situation evolves. And next slide, another very important thing, uh, it's of course, apart from the legislative framework and the incentives, it's investments. So uh, again, at EBA, we made a little bit of an internal analysis with members to see what, how much money has been secured by 2030 to make sure that that sector can grow. And the conclusion was that uh, there have been already 18 billion euros in investments secured for uh, the coming decade, so up to 2030. Um, and uh, just to, uh, to, to conclude the presentation, I also wanted to, to have a look a little bit into the, the uh, uses of biogases. So we were talking about production, we were talking, talking about the future prospects, uh, and, uh, and now uh, it's good also to see where this production that, on, on biogases can be used. And before this, we can also see again the bigger perspective. What are the energy needs? Uh, where is the energy mainly consumed in the in the in the EU? And what we see is that actually most of the energy needs are going to transport, to households, and to the industry in a quite uh, balanced uh, share, as you can see here on the screen. So those sectors are in quite urgent need for decarbonization. And actually biomethane can already uh, reply to, to those needs in a quite rapid way because the infrastructure is already in place, is already there. Then the gas infrastructure that we have can be used to, uh, to inject biomethane. So the decarbonization, decarbonization could happen quite quickly and at, certain, at reduced cost as well compared to, to other, other solutions. And if we go to the next slide, we can see the current situation uh, where the biomethane is being used. We include here some countries and we can see that actually there's a quite balanced uh, use on, on, uh, of biomethane in those uh, sectors, transport, buildings, industry, and also in the power uh, sector. So biomethane is already helping decarbonize those sector and can ha has a big potential to, to continue 
ensuring the, that decarbonization. Uh, the situation depends a little bit on the member states, and I think we will we will see more things uh, in the in the presentations uh, specific pre presentations from member states that are included in this webinar. Uh, but we can see that, for instance, uh, Denmark or Italy or Sweden are using the biomethane very much for the transport sector, whereas other uh, member states like Germany are using it more for heating and electricity. So it really depends on the needs and the situation of the country. Um, so, well, this was uh, a little bit the overview that I wanted to provide today. Uh, the conclusion here is that we can see that the biogas sector is growing rapidly and scaling up. We still see a big potential and, and, and we see the need for a bigger acceleration to make sure that actually biogases can be the, the solution uh, uh, together with other uh, solutions, of course, to decarbonize Europe, so to reach the climate targets and also to ensure uh, the, the resilience in, uh, in terms of energy that we need. We need to be more independent. So um, uh, in the coming years, uh, biogases can, can really bring forward many, many solutions from that point of view. And uh, well, that's all from my side. Um, if you have any questions, please, um, uh, I think we still have some time. Otherwise, if we go to the next slide, I included uh, just uh, a slide with the information on the stats report. Uh, I think the slides will be shared afterwards, so no problem. Um, so that you can also have more details if if needed, uh, because the, the, the details that I, that I included here are based on the on the statistical report that released in in December. So thank you very much um, for for your attention today. Thank you, Angela. Um, I would say we can leave the question for our Q&A session at the end. Uh, and so now we can move to the next to the next speaker. Um, so we are going back, let's say, to the dynamics in the emerging markets. And uh, now uh, it's the, the next speaker is from Poland. So we have uh, Magdalena Rogulska and Claudia Yuga from the Polish Chamber of Renewable and Distributed Energy. Uh, so please, uh, Claudia, the, the floor is yours. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, can you see the presentation? Please let me know. Yeah. Okay, yes. great. Great. Uh, so let's start. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Claudia Yuga and I'm uh, the Managing Director of the Polish Chamber of Commerce for Renewable and Distributed Energy. Today I have the pleasure to present the current situation of the Polish uh, biomethane market. Uh, join me for this presentation is Magdalena Rogulska, a leading expert on biogas and biomethane in Poland. Mm, I'll vote, um, Poland uh, has a significant uh, potential for biogas and biomethane production, only a small uh, fraction of available uh, substrates, substrates are currently uh, utilized in biogas plants. To increase the um, utilization of biogas and biomethane, uh, it is necessary to explore more efficient and sustainable production methods. In 2021, Eurostat Energy Balance reports indicate that 0 0.4 billion cubic meters of biogas will produce, uh, accounting for 1.8 uh, percent of gas supplies. Biogas mainly used uh, for electricity generation in power station and uh, combined heat and uh, power plants, around 73 percent. The remaining uh, 27 percent is used uh, in uh, commercial public uh, services. The um, European, uh, European Biogas Association estimates that Poland will produce 3.3 billion cubic meters by 2030. This potential could make Poland one of the top five biomethane markets in the European Union, significantly uh, impacting, impacting the domestic markets. 
The following slide displays EBA statistic for biomethane and biogas production as um, present percentage of total gas consumption in 2021. Poland is ranked second to last among the 16 countries listed. Uh, hmm, indicating the work that needs to be done. Although our potential uh, is significant, the current data demonstrates the necessity for further development. Mm, current situation in Poland. Poland had uh, 383 biogas plants with an installed capacity of around uh, 300 megawatts uh, by the end of 2023. This includes 168 agricultural biogas plants. Mm, however, mm, biomethane's production has not yet started. Poland has significant potential, especially in the agri-food sector. According to Poland's energy policy uh, 2040, 10% of the gas fuels transport through the gas network should be renewable and low emission by 2030. Uh, the current figures show that, that there are, are approximately 8,000 natural gas vehicles and we have 23 LNG and 28 CNG, uh, CNG um, Re, uh, refueling station. Gas system have, uh, has 26 active permits for biogas connection to its distribution network. Okay, good. Moving on the next slide, let's, let's examine the primary feedstock used in Poland in 2022. The country heavily relied on agriculture waste, 23 percent, this one. Um, this distillery uh, decoction, 19 percent. Liquid manure, 16 percent, slurry or slurry. Mm. Food processing waste, 14 percent. Okay, the biomethane landscape in Poland is undergoing significant changes. The country is beginning to develop the biomethane markets. The Renewable Energy Sources Act uh, amendment has brought about significant change. The country um, is the early stages of opening up to the biomethane markets with the um, amendments uh, to the Renewable Energy Sources Act introduction official definition uh, of biomethane and its uh, recogni recognition as a renewable energy sources. Producers are now obligated to maintain, register and submit reports. The legisla um, legislation uh, outline principles for issuing and trading biomethane gu guarantees. Mm. Polas, Poland has established a system based on fit in premium, FIP, to support biomethane producers. Um, this system uh, provides additionally incentives, 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 the form of sub, uh, subsidies. Uh, to the guarantee price. Additionally, the government has published regulations setting reference price uh, for biomethane. Mm. Although these steps are mm, commendable, the next phase involves introduction and auction system for biomethane plants larger than one megawatt and potential increasing the FIP limits in the next legislative period. Additionally, we anticipate the 
publication of strategy documents and roadmap uh, that will guide the development of the biomethane market in Poland. Now let's focus on what needs to be done for future market um, absorption in Poland. Immediate regulatory um, adjustments are needed to support its growth. Uh, the development of uh, biomethane market in Poland, it is necessary to immediately, Im immediately adapt regulation, focus on cost effectiveness, promote, promote sustainable research management and develop infrastructure. Uh, a, a coherent government strategy outlying current, current uh, and future measures to support biomethane production, distribution and consumption would, uh, would provide a strong political uh, in, uh, incentive. Advanced countries lessons show that guaranteeing tariff scheme are crucial. Poland must, uh, must extend support beyond, beyond smaller installation to bridge the gap. Success will depend on setting clear emission reduction targets and uh, investing in research into new technologies and business models. The solution. Today we cover Poland's current biogas production, which is 0.4 billion cubic meters account for only 1.8% 1 uh, 1 of the gas supply. Biogas is mainly used for power generation. Hmm. However, there is a significant opportunity to, opportunity to increase biogas production by eight to nine times. To have very full effect uh, of biomethane production on the green transition, biomethane production support is to be linked with agri-food industry that is the lar uh, largest employer in the current bioeconomy uh, bio and generates most of the feedstock for biomethane production. Mm. Poland uh, introduced um, measures to support biomethane in 2023, including FIP um, tariffs uh, for smaller, uh, smaller installation. However, larger installation lack support. Going forward, Poland has the potential to be a leader in the biomethane market. Of course, this is my opinion, but I, I think we have very, very big potential. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, maybe Magda, maybe you, you, you should tell something more. No, I think that's it enough with that presentation. We will be ready for answering on some questions if there will be any. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh... Claudia and Magdalena. Um, I would say we can now move uh, to our uh, next speaker. Uh, so I will now give the floor to the case of Latvia, uh, which will be represented by Christina Vegere from the Latvian Biogas Association. Please, Christina, the floor is yours. Uh, yes, uh, hello, everybody. I will try to share my presentation. Do you hear me and see my presentation well? Yes. Great. Uh, so yes, my name is Christine Wenger. I'm a member of the board uh, in Latvian uh, Biogas Association, uh, working uh, with Biogas uh, Technologies uh, more than 10 years. And this is uh, our presentation uh, regarding situation uh, in uh, Latvia. So you can see the map uh, of uh, Latvia. Mm, with uh, existing uh, biogas uh, plants, uh, which uh, were built uh, more than 10 years uh, ago. And uh, the support scheme uh, was in force uh, and uh, was 
developed more than 60 biogas uh, projects. Uh, at the moment, uh, there is uh, 50 biogas uh, plants. All of them uh, is uh, CHP plants producing uh, electricity and heat. Uh, the right uh, points are biogas plants, uh, which uh, uh, basically works on agricultural waste. Uh, before 2050, uh, uh, most uh, of feedstock uh, was maize. Uh, partially, uh, it was uh, uh, switching to uh, waste feedstock. In the moment, more than 85% of used uh, feedstock uh, is uh, uh, waste. Uh, and uh, to buy gas. Uh, install uh, plants has also their own uh, biomethane uh, installation for their own uh, use. I will tell uh, about one of these a little bit later. Uh, total installed uh, capacity 60 megawatts uh, and uh, no feed feeding tariff uh, anymore for biogas. So at the moment, uh, uh, the biggest one are switching to biomethane as a uh, other part is uh, trying to understand uh, how to work uh, further. Uh, okay, and uh, as you see, these uh, are existing uh, biogas plants, which are planning to convert their production uh, from electricity to biomethane. Um, yeah, so mainly, these plants are already uh, under construction. Uh, several are uh, in project phase. Uh, the red uh, ones, uh, again, energy in agro firm Tervete, uh, are planning to start uh, their production uh, in the next uh, few months. So the construction uh, works uh, are almost uh, done. Uh, and the uh, the others are planning uh, to finalize uh, their uh, construction phase during uh, this year. And the blue ones, uh, Grow Energy and Zemturi, uh, they are planning, uh, they already actually have this uh, for their own needs. Uh, but I guess upgrading the units they are using for their own uh, fleet. Uh, if uh, we are uh, talking about overall situation, all of these plants are building uh, biomethane uh, uh, plants without uh, any uh, governmental support uh, and all uh, of uh, planted uh, biomethane uh, will be uh, exported to uh, other uh, countries. As in Latvia, there is no legislation which support uh, biomethane uh, usage. Uh, yes, as you can see, all of them are agricultural based. Uh, interesting situation in Latvia is that if we are talking about technological part, uh, most uh, of uh, these projects is, are using pressure swing uh, adsorption technology. Um, mm, there is one uh, liquefied, liquefied biomethane. Uh, plant. It's a uh, uh, tervete. Uh, other, uh, others will be injected uh, directly or uh, via virtual pipeline uh, process. Uh, so they will compress their biometer until 2250 uh, bars and will bring uh, to the closest uh, mostly transmission system uh, operator uh, gas grid. Uh, as I said already before, um, the most uh, of uh, already existing biogas uh, plants uh, are using uh, agricultural waste uh, and uh, 1.4 terawatt hour of total uh, of biometal potential, uh, which can be produced till 2030 is uh, calculated. If you go compare uh, with natural gas consumption, it's around uh, 50%. Uh, yes, and most of uh, it is uh, manure. 
I, I, I wanted uh, to show you one example of, I think, very great example of circular uh, economy uh, in agricultural sector. This is a company uh, named uh, Grow Energy, which has uh, one of the biggest dairy firms uh, in Latvia. Since uh, 2011, they produce uh, uh, electricity and uh, uh, four years ago, they started the trans transition to biomethane production, uh, and they inst inst installed the uh, PSA uh, unit. Uh, how about used uh, cars? Uh, then uh, upgraded uh, their three uh, fent uh, tractors. Uh, to dual system and uh, in front of them uh, there is uh, compressed biomethane uh, vessels and they produced uh, around um, uh, 60 cubic meters per uh, hour of uh, biomethane. Uh, the vehicle fleet uh, is around, consists of uh, around uh, 50 vehicles. Uh, there are uh, uh, one uh, daughter company uh, is working with uh, trans trans in the transportation sector, so they ha ha uh, they uh, have also uh, several scanners. Uh, yes, an existing situation uh, regarding cell uh, sales of biometan. Uh, so with the first one, of course, we have to talk about uh, guarantees uh, of origin uh, system. Uh, TSO, Conexus uh, Baltic Gas Grid Operator, uh, is uh, uh, now member of uh, AEB uh, Gas Heme. Uh, and uh, uh, more or less uh, system for guarantees of origin uh, is ready. They are waiting for the first injection uh, of biometan uh, to uh, understand how this uh, system uh, will uh, work. Uh, but we see that there is an unclear situation regarding this virtual pipeline and uh, very unclear situation regarding off-grid biometan, regarding uh, LNG uh, biometan. Uh, so we hope that during the next year it will be possible uh, to uh, understand uh, how this system uh, will uh, work with also virtual pipeline because there's a three uh, projects uh, are coming uh, which uh, needs this uh, they are planning to export to country which is looking for guarantees uh, of a region and the moment yeah we should understand uh, how the system will uh, works. And of course, there is no clear vision how guarantees of origin system uh, will work uh, between different European countries, between uh, uh, different registries. Uh, at the moment, what we can see quite uh, clear uh, that uh, Red 3 is already nearly been transposed in, uh, into transport uh, energy law. It should be enforced uh, from the beginning uh, of the next uh, year. And uh, yeah, there is a basic target for biometan and advanced biofuels uh, till uh, 2030 uh, from the next year, 1% in transport uh, sector and plus 1% the next uh, each year. Uh, also, uh, there is confirmation uh, in uh, energy climate plan about 3% of biometan share in natural gas consumption. We, as a cessation, request 10% uh, and we are working uh, to achieve this target. So how, how do we see uh, what should be done uh, next uh, to promote? Not only uh, biomethane production, as you see, uh, 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 biomethane uh, production plants are coming, uh, but yes, so what we have to do uh, to develop this sector more. 
So, of course, this uh, legal uh, framework uh, should be improved regarding uh, transportation uh, and uh, as natural gas substitute, we should uh, set a clear targets for 2030. Uh, it's very ex important uh, to expand the uh, infrastructure and transport sector. There is at the moment 12 CNG stations, there is a zero uh, LNG stations. Um, yeah, and actually, this uh, winter was quite a good example uh, that it's quite difficult to fully rely on uh, uh, electricity and AVs. We had uh, huge problems uh, with, uh, uh, with charging of uh, 10 buses uh, in uh, Riga, uh, Riga public transport uh, company. So we see that it's, uh, uh, there is really good chance to promote more in, uh, biomethane in municip municipalities. Uh, we need to work on sector-specific promotion in various uh, sectors, uh, not only in a transport. We show we have to show biomethane importance also in agriculture, uh, different uh, services. Uh, it's really important to show biomethane through organic waste uh, util utilization uh, prisms that, uh, and showing this uh, circular uh, economy principles. Also, digestate is really important tool how to how we could promote uh, biomethane uh, uh, production. And yes, of course, some um, financial strategy. Uh, we should understand uh, how to promote uh, biomethane uh, production uh, usage, uh, uh, what funds uh, can be used uh, and uh, how we could uh, facilitate the establishment of new biomethane station and injection. And uh, final remarks. So uh, what we see is that uh, we need we really need support to show uh, scientific data driven arguments. Uh, so uh, showing statistics, uh, projections about the first about biometal potential to reduce carbon uh, emissions, uh, how to reduce reliance uh, on fossil fuels, uh, show, how much uh, uh, biomethane is important as circular uh, uh, economy in, in driven uh, circular uh, economy by biomethane. We need to show case studies uh, also based uh, on, the, on other countries which are more developed in biomethane uh, production. And it's really, really important to engage stakeholders uh, uh, across different sectors to create this unified voice uh, on the importance uh, of uh, biomethane. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Christine. Um, we are now going into our next speakers, uh, which are our Estonian partners from the Estonian Biogas Association. Uh, Lori Yasmin and Ato Oya, the floor is yours. Please go ahead. Hello. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Lori Yasmin. I'm the project manager for Bring me up on the Estonian side. Can you can you see my presentation? Yes. Right, very good. Then I can start. So I will give you a brief overview. Uh, what's the situation in Estonia? I would start with uh, our biomethane plants. At the moment, we have uh, eight biomethane plants already in operation. And uh, by now, just two day days ago, we received the announcement that uh, in 2023, our biogas uh, production was uh, 210 gigawatt hours, which was uh, 40 gigawatt hours more than uh, in 2022. At the moment, we have uh, uh, one more biomethane plant under construction and uh, one 
at least one biomethane plant under development and the uh, construction should start in March this year. We have more projects go coming on, but uh, I will I will tell about them later. Uh, we also have eight uh, biogas plants still in operation, which are not producing biomethane, but uh, electricity and heat. Uh, the reason why they are producing uh, still electricity and heat is that uh, the size is not big enough for biomethane upgrading. And uh, and four landfills where biogas collection already is ongoing, but and uh, some electricity production, but the but they are in the end of their potential. Uh, the main substrates, uh, according to our guarantees of origin register, we have a really well working uh, guarantees of origin syst system developed by Ellering, who is our TSO. And uh, the main substrates, as we can see, is uh, manure and uh, bio waste. Uh, the wastewater sector is uh, mostly coming from the Estonian cell uh, biomethane plant, which is using uh, uh, aspen pulp uh, wastewater for the for the biomethane production. And uh, at the moment, uh, biomethane production is uh, subsidized, but only until the end of uh, 2024 or until the fund for the subsidy is uh, used. And at the moment, the subsidy scheme is uh, working like this, that uh, uh, all the producers have guaranteed 100 euros per megawatt hour uh, minus uh, natural gas market price. So if the natural gas market price is over 100, 100 euros, then uh, uh, no subsidy is paid if, if not needed. Uh, at the moment, we have uh, 25 CNG filling stations and uh, two LNG filling stations and around 6,700 gas vehicles that are using uh, uh, mainly CNG and, uh, and seven vehicles are using LNG as well. Uh, it uh, consists of uh, uh, trucks, buses and uh, cars. Our future targets, of course, uh, according to NECP, the future target for biomethane production is 0 0.4 terawatt hours, but the Estonian Biogas Association has uh, de developed the biogas roadmap and uh, and uh, we have uh, uh, said that it, it should grow to 1 to 1.3 terawatt hours uh, by 2030. Uh, up to 10 new plants via Repower EU investment subsidy in next three years. At the moment, uh, there is a subsidy scheme for uh, biomethane plant uh, construction, uh, which will be announced in in March, and there are several projects that are working uh, working to get part of this subsidy, and there are around uh, ten projects that are interested. Uh, Fifteen thousand methane cars, uh, fifteen. 1,500 trucks and buses and uh, 50 filling stations by 2030 is also announced in the uh, in the biogas uh, roadmap. And uh, wider biomethane usage uh, in in shipping uh, and uh, in public uh, procurements. At the moment, uh, uh, most of the biomethane is used in public transport. Uh, for example, 100% of Tallinn city buses are running on uh, on uh, on methane, most of which is biomethane. And there is one uh, uh, one ship uh, in construction that will be launched to the, the waters in 2026 that will start using biomethane. 
uh, but uh, for example, roadworks and uh, and other other sorts of uh, public procurements are not using that much uh, uh, methane powered trucks and uh, vehicles yet. And uh, another target for future is to produce more biomethane out of uh, biodegradable waste. Last year, the first uh, first biomethane plant that's using uh, biodegradable waste from uh, uh, from households uh, was uh, started up, uh, but uh, there is potential to use more. As I said, a uh, hundred percent of biomethane at the moment is uh, used in transport. Uh, transport sector, according to the uh, Guarantees of Origin Register. Uh, and there is, uh, there is rumors that the investment subsidy for gas trucks is planned as, as well. And, uh, and also for injection points uh, by, by TSO. If we are following the Latvian example, our our planned and uh, wider biomethane usage in industry and heating. Measures for the future market uptake is of course uh, first uh, to produce more more uh, more methane that can be used in the market, and and for that we need. Uh, more high yield substrates since uh, so far most of the substrates are from agriculture but uh, there is potential to use more slaughterhouse waste uh, grease waste oil from restaurants glycerin and uh, from fish industries and also uh, the specifics of estonia is that there are uh, a lot of uh, out of use agricultural land uh, mainly grassland, uh, de decommissioned peatlands and uh, wetlands by the sea that can be uh, taken in use for uh, biogas uh, substrate uh, production. Uh, we, we also are looking forward for a bigger biomethane use in maritime sector as uh, Estonia is located by the sea. We have a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, ships and transportation between the small islands uh, which can which can uh, use uh, more biomethane and uh, also we're looking forward for the biomethane use in industries and uh, and uh, and commercial heating uh, the next measure would be public procurements to give preferences uh, to methane powered trucks and buses and to exempt and differentiate the 40 to 80 percent of heavy goods uh, vehicles consuming methane fuel from road tax and heavy duty tax in Estonia uh, on the basis of uh, euro classes to use the example of uh, of Germany and and one one measure for also for the market uptake would be to use uh, more power to gas uh, uh, technological innovations uh, so we can use the carbon capture and utilization uh, to double the biomethane production uh, on this map you can see our biogas and biomethane plants with a with a blue color uh, there you can see sewage uh, treatment plants uh, with a blue uh, yellow color uh, there are marked uh, landfills that are collecting biogas and uh, producing uh, thermal energy or electric energy uh, with a purple color there are industrial wastewater treatment plants only one of which is uh, using the wastewater to produce uh, biomethane and uh, with a green color you can see agricultural biomethane plants uh, 
the market in Estonia has taken a great leap over the past six years. Uh, six years ago in 2018, at the same time we're talking right now, uh, there was zero biomethane plants in Estonia. And uh, now we have eight, which are producing over 200 gigawatt hours already. All the bigger biogas plants, uh, which were producing electricity and uh, heat, have converted to biomethane upgrading and uh, there has been at least one new biomethane plant added to the map every year. Uh, yet it will take continuous work to reach one terawatt hour by 2030 and also to update the market for biomethane. To grant security for the new biomethane plants, it will be essential to work towards international biomethane register and uh, and biomethane international trading and also as said before uh, public uh, procurements for biomethane powered vehicles and uh, and uh, also wider use of biomethane in the gas grid thank you Thank you, Lori. Uh, I don't know if your colleague wants to add something. Not at this stage, thank you. Okay, perfect. We will leave for the Q&A session. Um, I think we can now move to the last speaker, uh, which is actually our project coordinator, Mircini Christou from uh, CRES. Um, which will, let's say, draw some conclusions uh, and also give us an overview of the next steps, more or less, of our project. So please, Mircini, go ahead. The floor is yours. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the same, very same question. Do you hear my, do you see my screen or do you hear me? Yes, we can see you and right. uh, we can also see your screen. Lovely, lovely. Uh, many thanks. Uh, first of all, I have to start with uh, thanking all the speakers before for uh, these uh, excellent inputs they have uh, presented and the very good work uh, they have done during the first uh, half of the project. We are now at the month uh, 18. So, uh, as you understand, uh, this uh, the Green Mia project aims to enhance the uptake of biomethane in Europe and mainly it is uh, focused on countries with less developments as the countries that uh, uh, presented uh, their uh, case uh, before. So, Sorry, Mircini, we, yes. we, uh, you have to go into the presentation ah, mode if you can. All right. But I'm not sure, maybe your screen is frozen. Maybe like that. Okay, let's... Otherwise, ah, I, I can also... Yes, I have to... No. Uh, let me see how to... Do you want me to share your presentation? Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, okay. yes, because I'm not one. sure how to deal with uh, the screens. Huh? <laughs> one, one second. All right, I will stop sharing then. Okay. Uh... So in any case, until uh, Teresa finds the presentation, uh, the main aim of, uh, of the project is uh, actually to bring uh, information and uh, good practices and examples from countries that uh, have uh, already developed a lot the biomethane uh, market. And uh, the European Biog Association started with uh, presenting the situation in Europe. And now we, have, uh, we are working on, first of all, identifying the market in, uh, in the countries uh, with less developments. And the final uh, output would be to, uh, to proceed with uh, drafting uh, country-specific uh, policy measures and, leg and regulatory uh, measures in order to promote the biomethane in our countries. So if you can... Um, uh, what I would uh, like to present you now is some, uh, let's say, first conclusions of the first uh, half of, uh, of the project. Uh, we heard that, we all know that uh, the actual target is to reach the 35 BCM of biomethane by 2030. And uh, as we uh, uh, realized so far, 
Uh, it, what we really need is stable policies uh, because technologies are here. As we saw before, also uh, the feedstock is here, also in countries with less development. So what we really urgently need is to formulate policies. So this uh, uh, figure was uh, drafted by uh, the European Biogas Association. And what they did, they actually uh, allocate, divide the policies into uh, the following five categories that are really absolutely necessary for a country to be able to proceed with the policy making framework. First of all, one country has to have vision and targets. Uh, the vision targets help assist to, uh, to plan the national policies on uh, biomethane and then also assist the industrial players to work with uh, they to, to plan their investments and what is uh, and for this reason vision and targets are highly appreciated by the industrial players if not uh, uh, really recommended or requested urgently requested by the states so uh, the vision could be let's say uh, formulated a uh, generally formulated uh, um, vision of, of the project. Uh, it could be um, a, a roadmap, an action plan, or it could be in, in a format that uh, Angela presented uh, at the beginning of the National Energy and Climate Plans, the NESPs. So every country, and as we saw that most of uh, the, the majority of the countries have already proceeded with their uh, NECPs, which means that there is a vision and targets. Uh, targets uh, as well could be indicative, could be uh, uh, binding, uh, could uh, be long term, short term, and so on. So vision and targets are really very important. Uh, then the next uh, step is on, on, on the measures, the specific measures for, uh, uh, for supporting the, mar the, uh, the production of biomethane and then the market. So you see here on the left hand side, there are, uh, there are a, a production side uh, uh, incentives and on the right hand side, this demand side incentives. Starting with uh, the, uh, the direct investment and production support, it is actually refers to, the, uh, to, to cover the capital costs of, uh, of the investments and they are uh, referred to mainly as a payment uh, for, uh, per unit of uh, biomethane produced or per unit of electricity produced. Uh, you can proceed, um, Teresa, with the next uh, slide, okay? So they can be feed-in tariffs, feed-in premiums, investment uh, subsidies. Uh, more or less, this kind of, uh, of support exists uh, in, in our countries as well, in countries with the less developments, as we saw in the previous uh, presentations. The next uh, uh, category is the indirect production support. Uh, that uh, main, is mainly focused... Um, to the producers of, uh, of the feedstock. And uh, uh, the aim is to make them give, to make them direct their uh, products to the uh, biomethane plants, to the biogas biomethane plants, and also for the plants to produce more than one product apart from the, uh, the biomethane or the energy. It could be the digestate for fertilizer or the uh, uh, biogenic CO2 and so on. So those incentives could be regulatory and uh, with that, um, it, uh, some examples are that uh, uh, there are uh, target uh, sectorial targets, for instance, for uh, reducing the, uh, the waste disposal or uh, targets for reducing uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, which indirectly help biomethane um, progress and then it directly uh, uh, help uh, the, the producers, they give incentives to the feedstock producers to give their products to the plant. Uh, or it could be financial incentives, directly payments given to farmers in order to, uh, to direct their uh, products to the plant. On the uh, right hand side is the demand side incentives. Uh, as the market, um, as, as it was uh, presented before, we start with the market uh, side uh, incentives, uh, which are uh, uh, progressing, uh, um, which as, as the market progress, they move to the market uh, side incentives. So these market side incentives are mainly found in, uh, in countries where the market is progressed, the market is mature. Uh, so the, um, they, are, uh, uh, they can be tax incentives, 
that aim uh, actually to uh, to make uh, the biomethane more competitive uh, to to enhance the competitiveness of uh, of the market of the of the uh, uh, biomethane and then it could be uh, mandates the biomethane could be included in uh, in mandates like uh, uh, in uh, targets uh, on uh, the share of renewable energies in, in a country or a target uh, within the target of um, uh, advanced biofuels uh, and so on. Or there could be a public procurement rules, uh, meaning that uh, there, are, there will be uh, incentives for uh, public uh, investments to use infrastructure or to use uh, biomethane uh, in uh, their uh, uh, local authorities or uh, publicly uh, driven uh, cars or uh, energy uses. So promote uh, indirectly the, the biomethane market. And uh, finally, it is the market uh, access enabling regulations. And those regulations aim, uh, first of all, to uh, help um, to, to assist in the injection of the biomethane into the existing uh, uh, gas grids, uh, which means that uh, there could be rights to, to inject or cost sharing mechanisms because be, uh, between the biomethane producers and the, uh, the natural gas uh, distribution networks. Continuity of injection all year round independently of the capacity of the uh, natural gas grid. And also those regulations target uh, the tradability and traceability of uh, biomethane by uh, national registries of for uh, origins, uh, guarantees of origin uh, systems. Uh, so this is uh, what in general exists. It is the, the outcome of from the uh, biomethane markets in, uh, in the well very countries. And in the following slide, I, I have some highlights for policy recommendations based on, on, the, on the project itself, based on uh, uh, questionnaires that uh, were, uh, uh, were collected by the uh, uh, stakeholders in all our countries, uh, included in the Green Me Up, and also based on, uh, on discussions in, uh, in the hub meetings that uh, we have organized so far. So these uh, highlights follow the same pattern as we saw that in that exists in, in the well-developed countries, which means that um, in all four country, uh, five countries that presented so far in uh, Estonia, Latvia, Poland, uh, Czech Republic, and also uh, Spain and Greece that are not included in here, we saw that there is a strong uh, will to promote biomethane. Uh, targets uh, for 2030 and 2050, and that will go together with the bio LNG, bio CNG, and also bio hydrogen because they move together. And then uh, it was uh, very well, uh, very clearly uh, uh, pronounced uh, in all our meetings that we need to establish a coordinating policy making framework uh, between or across uh, the agricultural part, because agriculture has to give incentives for farmers to, to, uh, um, to give their, uh, their products to the biomethane uh, plants. Uh, so it will be agriculture, waste management, energy, and the transport sector all together. And in those uh, policy making framework, uh, have to, uh, to have a very active part, uh, public consultation procedures, uh, so as to increase the interest of the end users. Uh, in addition, CO2 emission uh, targets and rest targets uh, should be more strict at national level. That was also uh, stated in, in, uh, in our questionnaires. And um, uh, have also uh, specific digestate and biogas utilization policies. So in the next uh, slide, there are... Um, uh, uh, highlights for mainly for direct and indirect production support because so far we are on the left hand side uh, uh, categories of uh, of support the uh, production uh, uh, the production side uh, part so we need to launch uh, financial instruments to confront with uh, the main uh, economic uh, barriers that is the high investment cost lack of subsidies financial support programs uh, and so on, and then decide uh, design measures to address the main 
technical barriers like the infrastructure challenges, the poor collection of the feedstock, it is uh, still uh, an issue uh, here that is uh, highly uh, segregated. A lack of vehicles and adequate uh, waste transportation. Uh, address uh, uh, other market barriers, this time the high price of the biogas and biomethane uncertainties and the regulatory hurdles, uh, hurdles regarding to the injection of the biogas into the grid, uh, large uh, amounts of uh, waste feedstock that currently cannot be used, reduce the bureaucracy, that was another issue that uh, arised, uh, that was uh, present in uh, almost all cases, reduce bureaucracy during the construction of the operation of the biomethane plants. Uh, internalize the environmental benefits so as to improve the competitiveness of biomethane compared to the uh, fossil fuels. And uh, reinforce knowledge and skills of the technical staff that will be used for providing dedicating training that is uh, really requested. And uh, finally, what is uh, also in, in the next slide, Teresa, what is also uh, pointed out is that uh, we need to facilitate the exploitation of the agricultural residues. We saw that there are uh, uh, residues, not only residues, but also by, by, by uh, industrial waste, organic municipal solid waste, the sewage and so on for biomethane. Uh, the the um, quantities are there, but uh, we definitely need to work on, on an effective exploitation of reaching those quantities and make them cost effective when they are used for the biomethane production. Uh, and uh, finally, the injection to the grid, it has to be facilitated because in most cases, the biogas or biomethane plants are away from the... Uh, from the, uh, the distribution grid, and that has to be solved. And also enable uh, the injection of biomethane into the transportation grid and mobilization of off-grid applications. So uh, that was uh, the, uh, the, the highlights from the work we are doing. And the next step now is to uh, work on uh, on presenting on, on uh, identifying specific measures for each country that could help really help deploying further the, the biomethane market so uh, again these are the contacts that uh, where you can find the results about the uh, the green Me Up project they are all uh, uploaded when ready uh, thank you very very much for uh, your uh, attention for all of you that stayed with us for uh, almost two hours and uh, I really urge you to uh, to um, uh, visit our site and find the results and also please contact with us if you have things to discuss or things to suggest or if you th need more information from us. Many thanks. Thank you, Mircini. Um, so uh, we are now moving to the Q&A session. Uh, actually, we saw that many ans many uh, answers were already have been already replied by, uh, in particular by the speakers. So thank you also to the speakers for for replying to the answers. Um, I see some questions which are more connected. I would say to the um, technology. Uh, part of, uh, of biomethane so maybe uh, we can try to read one of or two of these ones also because then we will be out of time um, so I will start just one second sorry I'm okay so I will start with the this one uh, is Ellerin connected to, to AB or to Ergar, and is it possible to export GO or set a cancellation statement? Uh, I think this uh, answer, uh, this uh, question, sorry, is for uh, uh, the our Estonian partners. So uh, Ato, if you want to answer, please go ahead. Yeah, the the Ellering is in AB uh, connected, and uh, the export of uh, certificates is. In principle, in theory, it's possible. In practice, nobody's done it yet. 
but I think uh, Estonia, Latvia, and uh, as we are the same gas, Estonia, Latvia, and Finland are the same gas uh, um, trading market with one entry, one exit point. So it's theoretically possible also to export the, both the molecule and the certificates to abroad. But the practice is, uh, at least in the Estonian side, is missing. And uh, so far, it was also the technical obstacle because uh, uh, the only recently, last uh, September 23, the Estonian TSO Ellering adopted the uh, amendment to the law and the biomethane uh, quality requirements and, and allows now to have half percent oxygen in the biomethane to inject also to the TSO. Because in Estonia, the distribution networks are usually very low consumption, especially in the summertime. And if the, if the biomethane production is, I don't know, more than 150 cubics per hour, then in summertime, it's really hard to find uh, the grids where, where in the distribution networks, this is consumed 24-7. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Ato. Uh, I will now move to the next question. Uh, what part of the injection station would be paid by the TSO and not by the producer? Would part of the compressor capex be paid by the TSO? Um, I guess this question will be answered by Christine from the Latvian Biogas Association. Please go ahead. Yes, maybe I, I could uh, tell about Latvian situation because it's really hot topic uh, based on uh, EU regulation gas directive. So there is, of course, uh, there's sense that uh, uh, TSO and DSO should should uh, have this position and to uh, understand how this equipment uh, can be paid by. Uh, so not a biomethane producer. And uh, this is really, uh, so the part uh, of uh, this injection point uh, very often is very crucial for biomethane projects. Uh, and uh, at the moment also we are working uh, to understand how these uh, assets can be provided by uh, uh, system uh, operator. Because especially for smaller uh, uh, biogas uh, stations, this is a dead end if, if they have fully uh, to convert to pay for this. Uh, and other uh, op opinion is that at the moment, example, Connexus, uh, uh, they are willing um, to, to have these assets in their own uh, uh, portfolio so it means that at the moment this legislation is that by gas plant by metan plant uh, build buy everything for uh, injection points point and then at least this chromatograph uh, and safety part is uh, transmitted to gas uh, operator which is a, a, a really a huge question. Uh, why we don't have at the moment any support uh, and we have to transfer uh, our assets. So at the moment we are working uh, that system operator should somehow uh, paid for this injection points. Thank you, Christine. Um, okay, so uh, I I think we almost uh, answered all the the required questions. So if there are no further questions or maybe something else that the speakers want to address or to answer, I think we can also come to our conclusions. Uh, I would like to thank all the the speakers for attending our webinar and for also being so responsive also for our public. Um, so uh, as Mircini was also saying, uh, you can find all our results and updates on our website. We do also have an email address, which is info at uh, greenmeup slash project.eu. So if you do also want to send us an email, you, you can for any kind of information needed. And you can also follow us on our social media, mainly on LinkedIn, but also on Facebook and uh, YouTube. So uh, many thanks to everyone and uh, have a nice evening.
Thank you, Bye -bye. Teresa. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye to all. Bye.